217. Uh, let me see if I can get the light on. Somebody was asking me, do I like the output of this wood burner, this hot blast? Yes, I do. I tell you the features I do like. I do like that it burns what they call from north to south, this way. Now, east to west is this way on whatever wood burner. I don't have the handle, so I just use a wrench. I like it because I don't have to use a shovel or anything to get rid of the coals. It's, it's what they call a, a shaker. Well, if I put the right size wrench on it, it'd be better. There we go. See, it's just a shaker. I like that because I don't have to move a brick on the other one and, um, you know, and sweep it and all this other stuff. And this, I just have to pull the tray out. Um, I like it because you can load a lot of wood in it. Um, I get it started with that, and you can just throw big logs in there. And for a person like me, it works really well because I don't heat my garage 24 hours a day. I can come out here and the temp is... Forty degrees in here, and it's 117, 12, 18, and temps 35 outside. So I could have once I get the fire within 20 minutes. Once I get some coals going, and I want to thank Finn Painter One, I think his name is, for telling me how to adjust this because I really don't know how to adjust wood burning. What I end up doing too is is I leave this open. The reason I leave it open is because I'm heating this and I'm heating this and that's 1,200 square feet. But what I've been doing is heating this too. And there's zero insulation out here. And because I don't really like using that. And I can get this up to 50 degrees, but I have to get it roasted. I know I'm getting sidetracked. Basically what I've been doing is caulking every seam I got a probably another day of caulking I don't know how many tubes I've went through but that's pretty much what I'm gonna well that is what I'm gonna be doing today um, in uh, slow SRT I guess what I was trying to say and it wasn't very clear is that me and Milo were discussing what was the first car that came out when he started going from this style of outward to inward. Milo says the first car that he had seen was a 64 Mustang or 64 and a half. That's another debate I'm not going to get into. But I was, what I was wondering is whoever came out with the door going in the fender, didn't they patent that? And then, then, like GM, Ford, Chrysler, everybody have to pay a royalty for that? That's what I was trying to explain. I wasn't trying to throw Milo underneath the, the bus. I do have a question for Velvet Hammer or, or someone that plows. I think somebody jerry-rigged this. I really do, and I don't know much about a plow at all. It looks like at one time there were threads. And now, I don't know if somebody put a boat in this. This is non-adjustable. I haven't looked at any other plows, but I think this is wrong because I can't adjust it because what I don't like is what I'm doing is I'm pushing mounds of dirt up that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, I would I would assume that you should be able to adjust that. Um, can somebody let me know if I look like somebody jerry-rigged this? And, and if they haven't, I don't... I thought about taking that bolt and pulling it through and putting it here just to raise it so leave about an inch of snow on the ground but then it wouldn't fit in here I think it's like the rest of the truck somebody got their uh, dick skinner in it and kind of screwed it up you know once I get this fire rolling I can throw them big bitches in and that's what I like it's really it's really nice the other wood burner it's more for a house it's more for you know, you got to maintain it. I think that will produce this heat if you have it on 24 hours a day. Uh, I don't have it on 24 hours a day. For a person like me, it just heats for like maybe eight hours a day. It's worth this money. If I would have known back then when I bought this, 
I would have bought one of these brand new. Velvet Hammer, I think you're going to be more than pleased with it. I am. Um, maybe once I live here, I still don't think I'll heat it all the way. But anyway, um, it's time for me to um, caulk, caulk, caulk. Oh, and I want to thank you, uh, Gas is Glass. I don't know if that PVA that you have is going to be affordable for me. I haven't contacted these people, but I did read it some more. Like, um, if surface was previously coated with whatever, remove this by simply peeling it away. And this isn't, this isn't what's happening. I don't really think it's because it's cold, but I haven't tried it at 50 degrees or above. Um, you know, I got four gallons of this shit. But anyway, um, yeah, it's time for me to go caulk and get a fire going. When in doubt, Whip still caulking. Um, I wouldn't think that you'd have to caulk the doors, but um, I know this is not going to be airtight, but you know, um, maybe I'm just anal. Um, could be. Um, tomorrow I have to uh, come back and trim the car. And what I mean by that, sometimes I make a really good run. You know, make a really good run. And I'll show you one that's not so pretty. Um, I call them stringers or whatever. Oh, I know there's some screwed up ones. Oh, like right here. This is what I've learned. You know, like that little hanger. Don't, don't get your finger in it. Well, that's where my shoulder got into it, but I used to smear caulk like that and it's a mess. So what I do now, I think it's a better idea, is let it cure and then come back with a razor blade and cut the top off. That's not that I'm a professional caulker or anything, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna caulk these doors, which is kind of hard when you can't get a caulk gun in there that well and it turns into, uh, turns into a, you know, a piece of mess, you know? You think you can get a cop gun in there, but maybe people are better than me. Um, after it's all said and done, I'll probably put caulk right here on the outside too. I know, probably nerdish, but um, I just want this to be the best that it could possibly be within my means. I think I'm going to paint this with white oil base and I see what Gas's glass had he had PVA that's pretty much what peel coat is I don't know how much PVA is but tomorrow I'm gonna bring that boot coat stuff I have and bring it home I'm gonna get it up the town and I'm gonna spread a little bit out and if it don't um, do what it's supposed to do and I have a hard time complaining it might be hard to believe, but I do. Because I don't feel a lot of corporations are going to do anything about it. But I got to call them and say, you know, this is not peelable. Not peelable at all. And I thought maybe I could just paint this and not get over spray. And, you know, I've never been in a body shop. I've been in spray booths where they have automated robots. Just fucking pull up and paint out up and down all day long. And you get a lot of spray. And I got a feeling that if I don't peel coat this, I'm gonna regret it. And I'm thinking the peel coat that I want, man, you know, some of that stuff goes for like hundred dollars a gallon. And the way they calculated it, they said I need four gallons. Do I want to spend four hundred dollars on this? Ah, no, man. On the other hand. Do I want me and my brother Scooby to scrape this shit down in gas leak for 10 days? No. Hopefully everything will work out. Anyway, piece of property, piece of oneself, piece on earth, rest in peace, big piece of pie, piece of action, piece of puzzle, piece of pussy, piece of corn dog, piece of pizza. And when the big dogs get all done eating, I think we're all puppies. It's my opinion. Could be wrong. You know what I learned recently? Take my wife for granted. That's my foundation.
salvation. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't be living out here no more. I spend hours out here, but not like I used to. I used to spend 10, 12 hours a day out here. I spend like eight. When I go home, it got to a point where I've been married 15 years. I didn't really, I didn't spend no time with her. She did everything and I did my thing. And you know what? I'm supposed to be the leader of the family, so I go home and treat her like, I'm a good fellow now, put it that way. You call it what you want. I call it being happy married. I love my wife. She's good for me, good to me. I think after you're in a relationship, take things for granted. There's a couple of reasons why I came to the conclusion. One of them was, the other day I was leaving Lowell's and I seen this gentleman, and I don't see this rare in my area. I seen this gentleman, he's probably about, I'd say he's about between 60 and 70, I don't know. He got out of the car, and I wasn't really paying attention. He got out and opened the door for his wife and picked up her hand like she was getting out of the carriage. And you know, I, I walked up to him, I said, you're a good man. He goes, why is that? And um, I said, because you opened the door for your wife. He says, I'm all trained. I said, is that what it really is? He goes, no, because that's how I was brought up. He said, when I met her, I was really good to her. And I, he says, we went through some hard times and I learned to be good to her again. And that's what I've learned recently, real quick, like, this, I used to think this garage was my whole world. And I love this garage. I love it. It's not the best of, in the world, but for me, what I can afford and what I dreamed of, this is all that. But you know, to tell you the truth, this don't mean shit to me. Now, if I don't have a good foundation, my wife's good is my foundation. She's, if she can put it with me, and that's a fucking handful, people. You think that's a joke? That ain't no joke. It's a fucking handful. But that woman to stay with me for 15 years to the good times and bad times? I ain't saying all the years been good. But you know what? People forget when you get married. They say it's better or worse. And they don't even listen to that shit. I didn't either. Things don't never stay the same. And she stayed through with, with me through the worst times. I've had some hard times the last couple years. But you know what? If y'all are struggling with your marriage, it's like, don't worry about the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Maybe if you fertilize your own grass, it'd be green too. And that's the worst fucking wisdom. I learned that the hard way. I always all that in a bag of chips. What good is a king? He doesn't have a queen. Yeah. Say goodnight, Irene. Anybody gonna say it? I'll be back here tomorrow. I think my videos are just accountability, what I did today. Anyway, I'm sure you done right hearing me ramble. And the dude about the vapor, the vape, I don't know what to tell you, bro, um, get a mod. Don't get an eye smoke, don't get an e sick get a mod if you're gonna spend the money. Um, buy the, uh, the premium liquids like the cut wood. Um, don't mess around with uh, people that make their own because it's not as flavor, flavorful. And if you use ice smoke or e-cig, you really don't get the flavor. But if you have a, a mod, they're about 150 bucks. You know, I've been through this, you know, one and another and another, and learned the hard way, but if you want to quit, smoke mod. A mod will give you flavor. That's all I can say. When in doubt, whip the shit out.